51st and Wood, gangs, Chicago, cops, getting away with stuff, doing time. Um, the reason why I wanted to uh, oh, on, I put my, uh, my boy on my channel was because um, he's another uh, success story. I mean, he, he lived it, moved out here, got away from it. And, uh, you know, he's doing well now. He's actually, I, I was just telling my girl, he has his whole garage full of fucking toys that, you know, what, 15 years ago? We were living in, like, studio apartments, and all we did was drive our motorcycles. I don't know what you call it. All day. <laughs> <laughs> I, lived, I lived in an apartment where, I remember at night, I had to have the painters because there was a, a. You lived in a fucking auto body. Yeah, there was, where they painted the cars. He had to come knock on my door and tell me to turn my AC off because the vent to the paint booth and the vent to my AC were like a foot from each other on the roof. <laughs> and once I remember one time they didn't they didn't tell me and I woke up. I thought I probably shouldn't have been here. I woke up high. Yeah. My whole freaking apartment yeah. was full of. Uh, uh, paint fumes, but yeah, I talk about it all the time. Yeah, so it was when people come to my house They're like oh you got it. So you're so lucky you got all this stuff. You're you know, look at you who gave you that You know, I'm like well, you know not uh, It was ten years ago. I not even ten years ago. I was living on the side of an auto body shop um, You know and that's, that's and here I am now and it's not like I have but I worked my ass off. But that's I've the had thing. to make a lot of life choices. That and if you wouldn't have grown up the way that you did, you wouldn't you wouldn't be where you're at today. Yeah, it's you know, I, I grown up is kind of a. Uh, well, I wouldn't say you grew up. No, no, I, I, I go back and forth because <laughs> no, I discuss this a lot because I try to think because I talk you're about. You're still a kid. Well, it's that, and it, it's grown up, and you you start surrounding yourself with different people. You make better choices. You do. It's grown up is a good word because you grow up because. I always tell people, they're like, uh, people don't change. If you're an asshole, if you're a piece of shit, it doesn't matter what all this, happens, whatever yeah. happens, you're a piece of shit. You're a bad person, you're a bad person. When you're younger, there could be a guy in jail right now for murder as a kid, like we talked about earlier or later, depending on how this video is edited, um, that was hanging around the wrong people, was still young, was still growing up. Was making a lot of bad choices and you know involved the wrong people. Maybe killed somebody. Didn't want to. Was kind of you know yeah. where they were coming up. That doesn't necessarily define him as a person. And if that murder maybe would never take place or whatever it is, it, it, someone got hurt, a home invasion, um, and they were allowed to grow up. They could have turned into uh, who they truly were as a person. Because when you're younger, you're trying to fit in. Now there's some people that need to be locked up and they're just bad people, but. I think of this basis of myself and you and some of the other people that we surround ourselves with, some of the other people have similar success stories is they luckily made it through that transition period and then got into position in, in a place and got the right people around them to where they could truly grow up and become uh, and, and, and shine as who they truly are, shine. Yeah. you know, because I've always been the same person. I've always had the same. Yeah, we're still the same. I mean, we don't stuff, change. It's but just, I was younger. I was an asshole. I was just. I was. Uh, I. You know. We were neighbors, so I lived next door yeah. to him. He lived in the auto body. I lived behind the old people's house. Yeah. See, I grew up. I. You. What year? How old are you? Forty-two. Same age. Took you a little bit longer to grow up. It took me a little bit. I longer. was already in the process of growing up, although I moved here from Chicago to begin that journey, and then I. I, it didn't begin right away because I came out here and I started getting into trouble, just making stupid choices. And well, I mean, we used to get up at ten in the morning, jump on our bikes, put our vest yeah. on, and we would ride from ten in the morning to about two o'clock at night every day. Yeah, seven days a week. Two. I used we used to go maybe four. No, <laughs> the bars closed at two, so there was no way it was two. It was like, and it's funny because they closed at two, and because we knew we were there, they had to drag us out eventually. So it was two thirty-three. When they finally get us all out, and then we get home, and yeah, three. I remember at one point I used to we'd be out, and I'd go home, jump in my van, drive to work, go to sleep. Oh, where you had a job right then? Yeah, I did. That's a good. I've always had a job. I've always kept a job. I can't remember. Our paths, our journeys are different. <laughs> <laughs> but does it make you worry? Just <laughs> I've always kept a job. <laughs> and yeah, 
And so I would park in the parking lot and go to sleep. So I get that extra because it took me about an hour in traffic in the morning yeah. to do like a 20 minute drive. So I would just so I get that, you know, extra of half hour, 45 minutes of sleep. And I work all day. I put it's funny. These millennials nowadays, they can't. They can't burn the candle on both ends. And I, I talk about it all the time. It's like, fuck, we'd be out at 3, 4 in the morning. That's so so Tito, Tito yeah. would call me, yeah, anyway. And, but I'd work all day and then I'd promise myself and go home, go to sleep, and then we'd be out. Someone would come knock on my door, let's go ride. Let's go ride. Let's go ride, let's go, yeah. And that was, that was our life, but you know, um, I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna end it here and, you know, this is gonna be, uh, more than just a one part series with uh with Killer B cuz we got we got a lot of stories to tell a lot of stories this isn't even this is not even this is not even diving in this is just like the beginning and this is just like the past chicago and stuff so uh we're going to talk about other stuff you know our our, our rough rider days uh our fights that we had our <laughs> making up <laughs> You know, it, it's, it's, uh, people don't realize that if we would have had YouTube back in this, in, in our time, I think we would have been like, we'd be famous. I used be, to say it back then, I'm like, I wish, because back then you'd have to have like a camera. And I used to say it all the time. I wish we had somebody who could follow us around. Just follow us around. Our lives in that Rough Rider period, I haven't. Movies, TV shows, like stories. We would like have been on the show. show. Chappelle show with all the funny stories, Eddie Murphy and all that. You know, Charlie Murphy and Rick Jane. Nothing on the epic. Just like if we were, I say with Tito, man, if we were reality show, all these reality shows, like we all this been a shit, hit. it'd be on a hit. Because be it was sometimes so surreal. Like I see some on YouTube where they're doing a slap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like a thing. That was every night. Every, it was every called night. the corporate handshake. And we'd sit at a bar, it would just happen, and we would slap the shit out of each other. Yeah. I don't know why, but we did it. We, we had fun. fun. It was, it was, I have to say, it was the, it, it was a very good time for me in those years, and I would not take it back at all because I had some of the best laughs, cries, everything. And you remember that time that dude, uh, was looking at you and Tito. He was me mugging you guys, and I hit him so hard his hand to his sandal flew into the bar at that Chi Chi's whatever cabaret on Nineteenth Avenue. You don't remember? I don't. <laughs> but because there's so many, there's a lot of things that I probably do. I think I do actually. Now I think about it. But you know, uh, was it Chi Chi's? Chi Chi's Nineteenth Avenue. Nineteenth. But back then it was something else. I think. Nineteenth and what? At 19th Avenue and like by Oak or where Tito lived. We oh just no, right that was uh, pinups. Pinups. It was pinups. And my boy Tim. Tim Marquez, shout out the Shady Titty. Yeah. What's the club? Coyote. Is it Coyote. <laughs> Coyote. But uh, he's still in the business, still in the game. We should get him on here because he can <laughs> tell all these stories from an outside point of view and give a different perspective. Yeah. Um, but uh, and and remember, guys, this is not to like glamorize everything we do. Now, this is just to show you an insight of this is the way we used to live, but you you could actually change things around. We were not bad guys. Well, I see, but that's, we had I think fun. there's a lot of different, like an onion, uh, this video, because the Rough Rider days, for you, for it was different for everybody. For, I know for you especially, you were, it was part of your, your, your you were, um, I don't know. You were still uh, my downfall going down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a lot of us were, but I still um, wanted to be a kingpin. <laughs> yeah, no, you were still making, and we all were. But look, I mean, you know, but like for me, it was more like the the, the beginning of the story, and even through that. But I, the rough fire stuff was just I can't take that because that wasn't. Ah, it was fun. It was a good time. It was and. We're going to talk about that.